My name's Eric Strebel. This video is about making a cheap, affordable shop compressor using a refrigerator compressor. If you're new to my videos, I hope you subscribe and check out some of the other design and making videos that I have. I'm going to show you how I built this compressor setup using various bits that you can buy on eBay or that you may already have laying around in your shop. I started with this replacement refrigerator compressor that I got from my buddy Joe. You may already have one or you may be able to pick one up on Recycle Day or from a local uh, recycler or scrap yard. I started by removing the existing oil inside the compressor and I did this because I read that sometimes the oil inside the compressor is really made for reacting and working with Freon and since there's no Freon in the system we replaced it with straight 1040 to give us some good protection. I bought this used pan 6 gallon uh, air tank on eBay for under $35. I was looking for a reasonable sized uh, stand-up air tank um, and this one allowed me to mount the compressor on the top and not take up too much floor space. It has a half inch inlet valve, a 3 8 out and a quarter inch relief um, slot at the bottom. First we're going to remove the existing graphics and add on our own vinyl graphics. My vinyl graphics came from my local sign shop. To mount the compressor to the tank, we need to make a bracket or an adapter, and I'm going to show you how I did that from an old server PC case. First, I'm going to cut off the existing bent uh, edges on the case so that I can get some good flat sheet metal to cut to a basic size. Here I'm cutting it down. Look away if you are not interested in some sheet metal porn coming up next. You've been warned. I've made a little cardboard template ahead of time so that I could cut the sheet metal to the right size. And I'm just using an old piece of scrap uh, metal here that I cut off to scribe the line so I know where to cut. Once it's the right size, I'm going to take this template and I'm going to scribe out the edges or the corners and make them nice and soft because I don't want to cut myself and I want to make it look nice. You take that over to the big uh, hand shear and we're just rounding out the corners so it can be nice and soft and it can look good. I'm always wearing gloves and I take the uh, sheet metal piece over to the big sander and I sand down all the edges to make them nice and smooth. Next, I'm going to take my little cardboard template, I'm going to tape it onto the piece of sheet metal, and I'm going to uh, punch out with a hole punch the holes that the compressor gets mounted onto and the holes that get actually mounted onto the tank. Here's a quick look at the template before the edges get bent of all the holes. I clamp it into the brake press and I'm going to just bend up the edges. That's going to give me some strength on this uh, sheet metal part, keeping it thin and light, uh, but give me that strength to support the compressor. Now the sheet metal already has a sort of black matte finish on it, but I'm going to reprime the whole thing because there's a fair amount of exposed metal. I'm going to do that and finish it with a semi-gloss black so it matches the compressor. Also make sure that you're always wearing the proper safety equipment like a spray mask. Here you can see my brother is finishing attaching that bracket onto the air tank with the bolts that came with it. And now we're going to attach the compressor itself onto the bracket that we made. We're going to use a quarter inch uh, lock nut and a socket cap screw and a washer. And I like using socket cap screws and lock nuts because they prevent the whole thing from coming apart. And in this case we're dealing with vibration from the compressor. So it's good to be safe. Next, we're going to add the 125 PSI safety pressure relief valve, uh, and this is added at the bottom of the tank, so if somehow there's too much air in the tank, it doesn't explode, and it'll relieve the pressure. Next, we want to add a 200 PSI check valve, and this allows the air to go into the tank in one direction. That way, the air doesn't flow out of the tank, out through the inlet of the compressor. This just keeps all the air in your tank. 
Something to note here is you'll notice how many turns I turn that uh, relief valve on. I went through about three of these pressure safety relief valves because I kept busting through the actual mechanism because they are not threaded deep enough. So be careful about that uh, and save yourself a little bit of cash. So next we're going to hook up the copper pipe that goes from the compressor to the tank. We use some uh, simple copper pipe here and I'm using a pipe bender that I rented from the local hardware store. It's actually a brake line uh, tool and you can rent those for free at most auto parts stores. Next I used a flare tool that I also uh, rented to flare the end. In this case I needed to do a little bit more than just flare it and I made a special bolt so that I could slip onto the outlet port of the compressor. Here we're just uh, sanding the ends so that we can solder the copper together using uh, standard soldering techniques like you would solder uh, plumbing in a house. I would actually suggest using some compression fittings. Just makes things easier to repair in the future. Make sure you sand the copper really good, add some flux, and then heat everything up really nice and then add your solder to get a nice uh, connection. Next, we're gonna build the outlet part of the system, which is where the air comes out of the tank and is controlled. You're gonna need some of sort of an adapter. In this case, I'll use a 3 8 to quarter inch adapter, some quarter inch nipples, a quarter inch four-way T to put everything together, uh, a pressure gauge to see how much pressure is in the tank, an on and off pressure switch to turn the compressor on and off, and a pressure regulator to regulate how much air is coming out of the tank and I also added a quick disconnect. Let's check out how all this goes together. I use some pipe cement or some pipe dope to make sure all the connections are leak free but you can use Teflon tape as well. Whatever is convenient for you or that you feel comfortable using. Just make sure that you tighten everything nice and tight so you have a leak-free system. Now that all the airline stuff is done, we're going to move on to the electrical. And I'm going to add one of these electrical connections um, that you would have like on a computer that I scavenged also out of a server. We're going to use these little quick uh, connectors you might find in your car and we're going to wire up some uh, cable. We're also going to use an old power cable from a computer as well and attach these little connectors. We're going to add some heat shrink onto the ends of these connectors so we don't get anything shorted out. We shrink down the heat shrink onto the metal exposed um, so that we don't have any issues and we can slip that onto these connectors just like that. We're going to run these wires to the compressor on and off switch. Here we're going to cut the cable to length and we're going to tin up or solder up the ends so that we can uh, curve them over and easily attach them to the screws, screw posts on the on and off switch. You'll see here I'm going to bend them over with a pair of pliers. That's going to make it super easy to screw onto the screw post just like that. So that was the motor we connected and here we're connecting the power supply which also gets grounded at the bottom. Then we're going to take this connector block, we're going to just rough it up and we're going to epoxy it to the underside of the tank so that it's out of the way and uh, kind of hidden. We'll put a little epoxy on here and we're just going to use some lids from some yogurt containers to hold the connector in place while it dries. The only thing left to do is to build an inlet manifold and this is what's going to make the compressor really quiet. I'm using an old shaving cream travel uh, container that I've stripped the top off of and I've inserted some brass wool. You could use steel wool as well and a piece of foam as a filter. This is what makes the compressor ultra quiet. The metal can has good sound absorption qualities and has a hole at both ends so it was ideal for this application. filling up the tank here to test it out. It's uh, sped up about 20 times. It does take a little while. The compressor is not that powerful, but it is super quiet. So the pressure uh, valve on the left is going to shut the compressor off, and there you go. 
at home quality silent air compressor. Don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. You can click on the little icon on the bottom right of the screen to do that. You can follow me on Twitter, Facebook, and Google+. Rock on.